Thanks for watching. Please subscribe so you get the alerts as soon as new content is posted. Dave Williams, editor here with today's video. It is Christmas time in November. Yay. And it's bloody cold. It's 40 degrees at the moment. So what have we got from TAW? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Shall we open the box? Santa Claus. Ta-da! Ooh. The best tire warmers in the world. <laughs> and beautiful and blue. And they're blue. I like it. Which matches my eyes, by the way, but that's another story for another time. So, we have, courtesy of TAW and Capiz, a beautiful set of tire warmers that we are going to use on Mr. Williams' GSXR 1000 2008 today with his Dunlop tires. And we're going to need every bit of the warmers. So, TAW Performance sent us these Capit tire warmers to test. So we thought we would do another video, uh, kind of an intro to tire warmers, basic uh, video on tire warmers uh, to start off the process. These uh, tire warmers are the Suprema Spina, Suprema Spina uh, warmers that are a single temp warmer. These are a very sharp blue, but they come in several colors. Uh, check out their website. You can see all their lovely colors. But before we carry on with that little bit of testing, Here's a, what is called a lesson learned. When I was in the military, when we would do uh, post-op briefs and reports, one thing we had to include in there was a section called lessons learned. Well, here is a video, a lessons learned video. The uh, first person to pass this morning. Oh, no. I was on the downhill of the corkscrew, my front end just went. Yeah. Just straight away from you? Yeah. And I, okay. I wasn't going very fast, but I feel like I might have lost some of the heat of the tire warmers in the morning because I came out behind a fella who was pretty slow, followed him for about four laps. Ooh. And then it was just like I was looking for a good place to pass, but I knew it was cold, so I didn't want to like push. Mm -hmm. And then I passed him, and then coming downhill, I just lost the run. Okay. So, I don't know. I'm not feeling that great right now. This is, I just got the bike back after lunch, so okay. I have a, this is my first session back. All right. What do you need? Uh, I'm not sure. How's the, just a check over? Yeah, just a check over. It's still okay. Well, I just want to check it structurally from the crash, so go ahead, okay. jump off. Take your time. Now, front end straight. This bar is slightly further out, which makes sense because it crashed here. Yeah, I had to kick that bar out again. Yeah, you'll have to nudge that out. There's nothing wrong with the front, it's tracking perfectly straight. So that's all fine. Steering stem's good, nothing's broken there. No, you're good. good. Yeah. No reason for you not to ride it. Shifter and everything's good. Brakes good. What bike is this? SV 650. First gen. Because the round frame, the tubular frame versus the other one. Can looks intact. Flog it. Give it some berries. <laughs> Coming out at five, lost the rear. What? I don't know. First lap. Warmers on or not? Warmers on. For did you check with your hand when you took the warmer off that the tire was hot? No, I did not check it. I didn't touch it. Okay, shit. But I don't know. It's got to be that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Shit. Because there's nothing, nothing wrong with the bike. Yeah, I don't get it. You know, it's just. <laughs> I was telling your friend, like, went out with the intention of like being smooth, consistent. Mm-hmm. Last sure. on the train. So I wasn't pressured by anybody. Coming in, I was coming in, not very hot, and I was geared one up because I'm afraid of popping sound over there. Right. And I'm just coming out, so just gently roll up. I don't get it. Neither do I. Mean, I. That makes no sense. No. Yeah. By now. It's well, no, you'd still see marks on the edge of the tire. You lost the front, not the rear. Oh, really? Yep. 
The front went pirouetting the rear around it. Oh, okay. It felt, uh, like, it felt like the back. The back has no spin marks uh, okay. as the tire's leaving traction, but the front does. Uh, that would suggest that it was the front. But if you look at your rear tire all the way around the circumference, all the marks are 90 degrees to the circumference, none have any bend at all. Mm -hmm. So it would suggest, now the front could easily do that in the gravel spinning and get those marks. So yes, that's possible. But the, the golden thing there is if you didn't touch the tire and feel it with the warmers, was it, was it hot at all? Yeah. And given what you said this more previously, Similar I, I, I should have said, make sure your warmers are actually working. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna, before I pack it up, I'm just gonna see if the warmers are getting warm. Sure. I'm not gonna ride again, but I'm just Okay, yeah. no, I understand that. Yeah. That would actually be more consistent because you lost the front the first time, so that's losing the front twice. Yes, Yeah. if that's the case, yeah. So now we've gotta check that the warmers work and not only do they plug in and light up, but do they get it to 180C versus 100? So, I was setting them also at like 158. I don't know, is that too cold? No. No, no that's enough heat. Yeah. Um, plug them in. I don't have a probe though. I mean, come get my laser gun. Okay. Plug them in, give it half an hour. Okay. If you're going to pa literally pack up and pack up everything but the bike, right? Come grab my laser gun and come shoot them. All right. But give it about 30 minutes and make sure the bike, put the bike in the position you've had it in when it's been on the warmer so there's no variable there. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Capit is top of the market at this point for all kinds of different reasons. Please research their site. They're very good at saying how they've reached that pinnacle, which goes always to MotoGP and World Level Racing. So, at this point in time, we're going to install these. We're going to put them on. We've taken cold tire temperatures, 45 I think in the front and 42 in the rear. And we're gonna go ahead, go to the riders meet and plug these in for exactly 30 minutes at full heat. And when we come back, we're gonna see what tire temperature we have. It is a single temp. <laughs> Capit Suprema. Okay. And they are single temp warmers. So, one shot, keeps them hot. Hey, poetry at eight in the morning. Now, I overfilled the hell of these tires. Okay, so we, if you overfilled them, they are what they are. We're not gonna worry about that right now. When installing a tire warmer, make sure you put it in or around the valve stem, but not against it. So, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it just in front of the spoke. Push that down, push that down. There we go. Then we'll centralize it get it nice and then go ahead and do the install always use your knee so there it is nice and tight against the spoke you want to ensure as much of the warmer as possible is flat against the tire now these are brand new so they're gonna look ugly for a minute until they reshape once they get warm Okay, get the curb eater wire out of the way. Then make sure that's all in. Nice and smooth. And then we'll repeat the process with the rear.
Okay, that's done. <clears throat> and then what you can also probably see, we're taking full advantage of heat. We've got the curb eater product from Europe that's gonna heat up the shock and heat up the fork. So when Dave goes out, the fork and the shock are already pre-warmed. We'll do a little bit on that piece later, but for now, time to get to the riders meeting. Let these puppies do their job and we'll be back shortly. Light come on. Time is up. So, feels very cold to the touch, but it shows 95, 96. So now, if this is insulating extremely well, underneath should be significantly hotter. So, oh, look at that, 160 degrees. So, perfect, plenty of heat in the front right now. Let's go check the back. Back showing a little, about the same, there or thereabouts. And, come on. All nice and new and sticky Velcro. Same. So, after, our allotted period of time, we're at 160 degrees from our original temperature of 40. So that's not bad. So we'll leave this now until we go out. So we'll recheck it again in another, where are we, another 15 minutes and see what increase we've got there and if it actually got any warmer. The other part about getting everything hot is the tire gets hot, but does the rim and it's really important that the rim gets hot because until the rim's hot, it steals heat from the tire. So what do we got, Dave? 74. 74, so the rim is almost twice as warm as it was. So there's very little heat transfer from the tire into the rim at this point in time, which is why when you go out, especially when it's cold, it takes three laps for the rim to get hot the tire to sustain heat and the two balance out together and then you can push. So, you'll also see some tire warmers or even some, some people put blankets over the wheel completely sh shrouded over to trap as much heat as possible and the reason there is to get the rim as hot as you can get it. So a lot of times for track days we'll leave the bike in the sun where the sun is at 90 degrees to the bike because it's heating the wheel up. So get you a two for one rather than keep the bike in the shade. So another 15 minutes, we'll check back on temperatures. All right, now we're at the full hour. So first off, let's shoot the rim and see where we're at. It's a lot warmer now. Okay, I got it. So 87 on the rim, so that's good. I'm liking that. Now let's check the tire. Let's go check the back. Rim. Same, 80 degrees. Tire. <coughs> so the important part there is, for the extra 15 minutes, Look how much more heat we got in the tire itself, which is transferring through the, the wheel. So then, the longer we could leave it, technically, the warmer the wheel will get. And we have no wind today at all to steal heat away from the wheel. So, at one hour, with the base model warmers for the cap it, we're getting the tire temperature we need. Now, the other part of that to remember is, if you're using really thin wire to plug to and from, you're gonna lose a lot of electricity, so you lose a lot of heat. So with tie warmers, plug them into a big fat cable straight into a power source by themselves. And that way, you'll get the heat that you need 
versus losing it in current through very thin wire. All right, one of the reasons Dave mentioned the power cord issue is because in that 15 minute segment, what we did was unplug those suspension heaters that were on the forks and the shock. And when we unplugged those right before that 15 minute session, we think that's what really ramped up that extra, uh, what, 30 degrees of temperature in 15 minutes. And most often that's caused by too thin a power cord from your power source to the warmer. So just bear that in mind. Anything that might um, be robbing power uh, from giving the full juice to your tire warmers m might cause some kind of performance variance in how they heat up. As far as tire warmers go, I've used uh, quite a few brands. Um, one of the brands I had recently didn't even last the season. These ones come across as extremely well-crafted. The fit and finish, as one might say, um, the materials, how things are sewn, uh, the, the strength with which the cord inserts into the fabric, um, all those things uh, speak of high quality. I use a tire warmer rotation. I always have a set that I'm using, and after mm, two seasons max, um, if I can afford it, only one season, I rotate the warmers out so that I always have a backup set. I'm using a fresh set and I have a backup set. And I have needed the backup set. I had a set of warmers that suddenly weren't working. And this is another lesson learned. As you saw from that video, I had the exact same experience. I just had these warmers on. They were, it's the first season I had them. Um, maybe, no, it was maybe the first track day or second track day of the second season on those tire warmers. And I headed out, it was a fairly chilly morning because it was a spring track day. And suddenly the rear end on my bike was just coming around like crazy. And I thought, what the heck is going on? I was like riding on ice. And I thought I would try, I suspected, oh, maybe the tire warmers and the tires aren't hot. So I got off the track and I went back to the tire guy, Scott Larson, the tire guy at, at uh, Utah. And he's like, oh yeah, oh, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're not very hot, but just go out and ride around and warm them up. Mm, no, no, that, that was not happening. At least I didn't have the confidence to do it. I just continued to skate around on the next lap. So I came in, busted out my spares and put them on. What are the top three things to know about tire warmers? Number one, when you take them off the tire and lay them down to get on your bike and ride away, unplug them. We just had that happen, uh, what, the second to the last track day of the year at Utah. A, a young man rode off and didn't unplug his tire warmers, uh, the son of one of the Apex track day owners. His son rode off and uh, spaced it, and within 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, suddenly those bad boys were smoking and we were running over there to unplug them. Unplug them before you ride away. Number two, and this is perhaps uh, rivals number one in importance. Before you put your gloves on, just peel back your tire warmers, put your hand on the tire and make sure that that bad boy's hot. Remember Dave's mantra, it should on this center of the a palm of your hand, you should want to pull your hand away pretty quickly, within a second or two, it should be that hot. If it's not, you got an issue. So just make that a habit, that before you put your gloves on, and you, you know, you've got your helmet on, you've strapped your helmet, you're gonna put your gloves on, usually that's the last thing I do before I start peeling off my tire warmers and dropping the, the bike off the front stand. Just check those things really quick and it'll save you as the, uh, the lesson learned video pointed out. And number three, there's no need for tire warmers with street tires, even hypersport tires. Some people, if they have multi-temp uh, tire warmers, will put the tire warmer on the lowest setting. But I think even the lowest setting on most of those tire warmers, maybe it's 120 degrees but usually the lowest setting is around 160. 
So at any rate, the purpose of street tires, even hypersport tires, is that they're compounded such that they will heat up to their operating temperature really quickly because they don't expect you to have tire warmers and they don't expect you to ride even though we've all seen the R Nicky Mouse videos and we've all seen plenty of other videos on the, on the internet with guys on the street and their elbows down on the double yellow line in corners. Um, they don't expect you to ride like that on the street. So those tires are designed to run at lower temperatures and to heat up to that lower operating temperature quickly. So there's no really no reason to uh, to run tire warmers if you're running street tires at the track. We'll try to get some more track days in over the winter. It's a little cold here in the northern hemisphere, even in California, to do track days. Sun sets early, but we'll try to find some time, get some track days in. There's some people out in the middle of the desert that still do track days, and use these cap at tire warmers and and get you an update after we've used them a little more, but. Out of the box, <clears throat> first time using them, quality product, can't complain.